Good morning. I'm Ron Burgundy, and in this morning special, we are talking about the evolution of the Anchorman and how I got so good looking. Now here with more on this interesting topic, out to the gentleman with the revolutionary to topic. I'm Champ. Football is awesome. To start off our wonderful newscast, we will begin by explaining the evo uh, elementary concept of evolution. Evolution is the gradual change of a species over a period of time. This evolution occurs due to mutations of helpful traits in an organism or species that are passed down by natural selection. Prokaryotes have resulted in many changes around the world. The oldest prokaryotes were anaerobic and originated 3.5 to 4 billion years ago, almost as old as Zephyr. You know we kid. What the heck? <laughs> in this environment, uh, they needed not the oxygen that is so commonly associated with life, but they were chemoautotrophs, obtaining energy from inorganic chemicals. However, get ready for this plot twist. Ooka! Was not simple, uh, but contained a storage system of polyphosphates, showing that use Ooka may violate all things known and complain organelles. Mine equals blown, right? This was likely the first organelle common in all life because of this. I know, contain your wild enthusiasm, gentle folk. Now consider how prokaryotes may have evolved into eukaryotes. Whammy! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Maybe we shouldn't put a bricks part in all caps. Caps will make him speak pretty loud, right? Before modern eukaryotes could... <coughs> Fifteen minutes later... This man has a beard, and my name is Brick. Nice to meet you. Before modern eukaryotes could form, they must evolve from sufficient energy metabolism and photosynthesis. Cyanobacteria may have been the first bacteria responsible for photosynthesis producing oxygen. They have changed the planet, leading to the downfall of the exclusive role of prokaryotes as aerobic bacteria, and later eukaryotes arise. However, the oxygen that these prokaryotes produce is poisonous to nearly all of the prokaryotes. Yes, cyanobacteria is the ultimate traitor of the prokaryotic world, almost as bad as, uh, you guessed it, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> As energy becomes more accessible in this world due to oxygen, it places pressure upon chemoautotrophs with greater ozone layer forming. Consequently, there is not as much UV light to be converted into energy, which is imperative for anaerobes and energy production. In addition, the fact of it being poisonous also puts external pressure under which cells must acquire means of dealing with this pressure. This was the first signs of aerobic photosynthesis, and respiration evolved as a result of the oxidizing atmosphere. And some bacteria were actually ingested, but not digested, by larger eukaryotic cells. Cyanobacteria and protomitochondria become the mitochondria and chloroplasts we know today. It looks something like this. These cells become into one. Spheres. <laughs> Proof that this occurs is that they are reproduced by binary fission, pass down independent DNA, and contain similar ribosomes. The new eukaryotic cells now had the moxie to venture into an aerobic world producing new energy. As a result of the more complex structures unfolded in eukaryotes, diversity spread like wildfire, and new unicellular and multicellular structures arose. This includes, you guessed it, our friend the Majestic Spirogyra. Ah, what beauty she beholds. Today, many bacteria have evolved to be friends of us. They are cleaning up oil spills, synthesizing K and B vitamin spores, develop immune systems, recycle dead matter, and may be used in fun activities such as biotechnology. What fun? I know. Whammy! Yes, it seems that maybe Alexander never, never conquered the world at all. He himself was subject to king bacteria. So remember to always treat your bacteria well, stay strong, stay beautiful, and watch our newscast 24 7 And back to Burgundy. Hey guys. It's Burgundy. One more time. Alright. Now that's it for prokaryotes. The unimportant parts of our world 
are done. So now it's time to talk about the evolution of the viruses. Those annoying little diseases and their effect. Now over to the suavest man on the news crew, the lady killer. He's the man of the hour, Brian Fantana! That's my cue. No, Brick. Welcome, ladies. The name, Fantana. The scent is Sex Panther. Perhaps the most influential activist of our world today is viral evolution. To start off the topic, let's use the example of one virus that is of the most danger to me, HIV or AIDS. HIV began from SIV that infects monkeys and apes like the ones in Africa. HIV 1 and 2 developed from SIV to be what we know today. SIV was passed from a sooty megabee to a human which resulted in two HIV groups and SIV was also passed from chimp to human resulting in three HIV 1 groups. Due to the rapid reproduction of viruses due to the use of cell machinery this replication in turn gets very sloppy to cause evolution. These sloppy seconds, I mean copies, cause mutation and reproduce strains allowing for HIV to take advantage and higher its immunity to drugs. This drug resistance is derived from the evolution of retrovirus HIV. It stops humans from having strong defenses against it. Yet, there's more pieces to that puzzle. Let's send it over to Burgundy. Hey guys. Your idol is back. To look at evolution from a different aspect, humans also seem to evolve to become resistant to these viruses, these major strains of HIV. There were many people who were already essentially immune to HIV disease before it was spread. These immune people held, held a mutant allele that caused resistance before it was spread. So, the mutant allele, CCR5 to be exact, spread throughout Northern Europe and gave lots of offspring of the population there the protective allele to the HIV strain, the allele that had provided for an immunity. And today, science-initiated evolution is trying to use that allele, the CCR5, to create drugs and simulate more human evolution to be immune to HIV strains. Yet, the process is like a game of tetherball, in which I destroy brick almost every day as a child, or a clingy girlfriend, if you know what I mean. HIV returns the ball with a powerful thrust, take that in whatever context you want, and evolves to be undetected by this drug, begins to act latent, and once again, it is time for humans to evolve. Back to the baby boy in the field, Fantana. Thanks, Anchorman. Overall, viruses primarily were able to evolve at an extreme rate, like the speed of me reaching third base. But this vir viral evolution sparked a resistance that began in humans as well as other animals. Now to end my essential segment, please play my jam. Sex Panther. It's illegal in nine countries. Montana, isn't that a baby making song? Did someone say baby making? This is how we do. Now we're going to have a little segment about one of the greatest evolutions of all mankind, the evolution to be able to play the great game of football.
And now, for the most segment always needed about the weather, from our one and only Brick. Today it is quite sunny as you can see. It's quite beautiful outside. With a, there's only a chance of rain. Ah, ah, ah. There actually may have been a 75% chance of rain today. And <laughs> it's coming down even harder. Ah! You guys made me tackle a coworker. You made me predict the wrong weather. And you know what? I'm tired of it. This is the evolution of brick. We found Brick sometime later, but it was not who Brick was underneath, but it was what he did that defined him. It was not important the evolution of prokaryotes or eukaryotes or even viruses. The important evolution was the evolution of mankind. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this ends our newscast. I only got one thing to say to y'all. Stay classy, Snowville.